This year has been a big one for Porsche with the launch of the latest generation 911 GT3 RS and the all new Cayman GT4. And now comes this, the Porsche Boxster Spider, a lighter, more powerful and more driver focused version of Porsche's already impressive convertible. <laughs> This second generation Boxster Spider follows the same formula as the first model that came out in 2009. The usual fold-in soft top is replaced by a manually operated fabric roof, the engine has more power and is mated exclusively to a manual transmission to make this the most driver focused Boxster. The engine is the same 3.8 litre direct injection 6 cylinder found in the Cayman GT4. That means it's good for 276 kilowatts of power and 420 newton metres of torque. That's a 33 kilowatt and 50 newton metre bump on the Boxster GTS, which wasn't exactly a snail. And because it's a Porsche, it makes this brilliant, unique, flat six soundtrack. And also possesses amazing responsiveness. You put your foot down, Put that is an airpin bend second gear. They just launches out. It's amazing how good this is, particularly in these Tuscan hills. Now, unlike the 911 GT3, which gets a technically faster dual clutch automatic transmission, the Boxster Spider has a six speed manual. And that's because this car really is all about driving engagement. It's not just about going really fast, although it does go really, really fast. Other changes to make it more driver focused include lower, firmer sports suspension settings, reduced sound deadening and the use of lightweight materials including aluminium, magnesium and polymers to make the Spider the featherweight of the Boxster family. In some markets, Porsche even deletes the air conditioning and radio as standard items, but Australian specification models will come with those luxuries and a few more as standard when it arrives in early 2016. But the centrepiece of all that weight reduction is this a manually adjustable fabric soft top that saves 11 kilos over the standard Boxster convertible. And because it's from the roof, it lowers the center of gravity to make the Spider even more agile. The other neat trick are these, two new bubbles at the back of the car to hark back to the legendary 718 Spider of the 1960s. So the real question is, do all these changes make the Boxster Spider a significantly better car than the already impressive Boxster and Boxster GTS? In a word, yes. It really is an awesome machine to drive. You feel so engaged with the car because every element of it is so finely tuned. The steering is excellent. It goes exactly where you point. It's got great precision and feel and feedback through the wheel. The gearbox is as sweet as a manual transmission as you will find in any car these days. Perfectly matched to the engine to give you that real feeling of engagement with the car. And the brakes, which are again from the 911 Carrera S, have plenty of bite. Even after all the hairpins we've tackled today, they've kept on biting hard. And the suspension, even though it's firm, is really well controlled so it doesn't feel uncomfortable at any stage. It soaks up the bumps really well for a sports car. And as for the grip in the corners, it is remarkable how well this thing hangs on. The big Pirelli tyres hold on to the road like you wouldn't believe. Driver engagement was the key for Porsche in this car. And without doubt, they have succeeded with flying colours. This is the kind of car but they admit will be a second car in someone's garage, second or third even, if you're really lucky. But it is the type of car that will make you get out of the bed on a Sunday morning to go hunting for some corners and go for a big long drive. It is so impressive. Like the 911 GT3 RS and the Cayman GT4, the Boxster Spider is a reminder that for all the SUVs and sedans Porsche may sell these days, at its core, it remains a company focused on building the ultimate driver sports cars.